Hey, Hebrew fans. So today it's time to open Orco. Finally, right? But before we do, let's first talk about some of the Orcos of the past. So originally we had an Orco was released in the 80s. I don't actually have him, but he was similar to this one. He'd have a rip cord you would pull and he'd kind of wobble all around the ground and, you know, kind of do some crazy little dance thing because of the little spindle on the bottom. And then uh, this, of course, is the Super 7 one. Um, this is the newer one, but we'll talk about that later. And then we had, uh, and then we had one that came out in 2000 X. I don't know where mine is at. And then we had the classics one. The classics one, of course, as you probably have guessed is my favorite. Um, he has an articulated ball joint on, uh, where he's on his stand. And then of course his arms are very articulated as well and uh his head's removable and he's so cool and they had a special exclusive one that would change color depending on your heat you can put him in ice water or hot water and he'll turn kind of clearish and kind of a vanishing act if you will for orco really kind of a fun feature and he actually came with a really cool accessory which was prince adam so you would get orco and prince adam was laying on the bottom of the box inside there and uh, it was just kind of funny. And he came with a little spell book. And the Comic-Con version had a color changing on the spell book too. So you can see you had the Comic-Con version. So that was that was really cool. And then we got um, Uncle Montauk. Montauk? I'm not sure if I've said his name right or not. And we have Driella, his girlfriend. And they came in, a, I thought, a three-pack. Who am I missing? Ah, uh, I think I'm missing somebody from this three-pack. Oh well, sorry about that you guys. I guess I should have looked through my stuff a little better. But we got these two too. Hey, it was the two pack. And, oop. Then we also had um, a named one, nameless one, something like that. And this guy, when he first got him, here's how he looked actually. This is my custom one. I'll show you this one in a minute. Um, he was kind of cool. He's like the unknown one or something. I don't know. I forget what his name was at the time, but they had him covered so you couldn't see what it was when he was released in the Comic-Con before he was actually released. And he has a stand similar to Orko, except for uh, there's no ball articulation on the bottom, so you lose that articulation on the bottom. But his arms were articulated and his head is supposed to be the evil creator of the Snake Man, you know, and he has this cool green blast. And what I didn't like about it was that you just could not give him any kind of attitude because you couldn't adjust this ball joint. So I took an Orco stand and I mixed it with um, his stand. His stand has a wider base. And I added the ball joint up inside there. So now you could give him some English to make it look like he's you know flying super fast forward. Now, the problem with this normally is if you take an lean a figure forward like that even him just with his green mask thing coming straight out with his arm being straight let me straighten his arm you get this effect where he's, he wants to wobble over so you can see he's not counterbalanced very easily and he'll so he'll fall over so what i've done is i've added a washer on the bottom for weight actually this one has two of them you can see them in there these two large metal washers the smaller one inside and a larger one here to match the curvature and this just gives it that counterbalance so he won't fall over as easy so that's kind of cool and then of course with my own orco i did the same thing and because the original orco stand only was super small this is actually original orco stand you can see the size difference in the platform of why i wanted to use the larger one and then adding the washer just gives that extra weight now on the regular Orco stand, I just added the washer on the bottom, and it's the same diameter, and then painted it black to give him also that um, little bit of stability so it didn't fall over as easy. When it came to the secondary characters, I didn't care as much, so I didn't actually add washers on theirs. Let's get my original. Now, these did come with a silver stand that was not see-through, so I had to get some extra Orcos just to use their stands with him. All right, then we had the Super 7 Orco. And the Super 7 Orco was actually very similar to the Orco we got in the 80s. Um, he does have arms that move and a head that moves. And he's rather large. And he has wheels on the bottom. So you can wheel him forward. But what's crazy about this is we know that Orco did not just stay on the ground. He flew all the time. He's always about the same height as Prince Adam. Which is why I like that the 
Origins, not Origins, the Classics came with the stands. So I went and made a stand, 3D printed this, that fit around the wheels. Check it out. You just put this right in there. It's got a little indent right there to match the shape of his uh, bottom part. And then now he's as tall as um, a standard He-Man figure. See? Ta -da. And if you want, these are also in my Shapeway store. If you get it from my Shapeway store, it won't be clear like this, though. It will be a solid color. But you guys get the idea. I did sell some of these on eBay. They're just too hard to print. So I'm not going to make any more. Um, but it does work cool. And you can get a non-clear one on Shapeways if you want. If you've got a black one, it won't look too bad. And then we got... Uh, this uh, one from uh, Loyal Subjects, this little itty bitty orca, which would make a great yuckers. And yet, I've actually kind of shown using a baseball cap for one of my figures I have that would fit on. Then I have to cut his ears off though, or cut the cap to mid match the ears. But you can make a yuckers out of here pretty easy. Use some chemicals to clean off this circle and put a Y there instead. And this is also made on my um, 3D printer because the original stand he had is super short and I wanted to make it taller. <laughs> And you can also print this from my Shapeway store as well. Same way you get it in black or some other colors. And the idea was to put him so he's the same height as Origins. And actually he is the right um, scale for what Orko should look like compared to He-Man. So there you go. That's about the size he should be. Maybe a little larger depending on the, on the actual uh, um, clip you got it from. But that's very close. All right. Now on to Origins because we... Oh, one last thing. We also got this uh, crazy uh, head that came with uh, this guy. So he's all armored up too. So they had the armored up version. Now I did find out that these ears are just glued in place. And so if you ever have to um, paint the figure at all, you can just pull the ears off and then attach the, the paint. Or if you want to make some really cool custom guy without these ears, you can pull these off, fill those in with some kind of putty type material, and then paint it to match and create a whole new character. So that's kind of fun too. All right, so let's go ahead and get to Origins, what we're here for, right? So here is our Origins, Orko, and uh, he is monstrously huge. So let's go ahead and open Oh, back of the box. That's right. It shows Orko can move, can raise his hands. He, he uh, can go on the stand. That uh, looks, someone you mentioned earlier, it's like a giant purple, like he expelled gas out the bottom half. And then other figures in the line. And we know these also came out in 2020, just like the other three figures we saw. And in case you were wondering, he includes a comic book. Look at the cool box art. It shows him throwing a bucket of water on Beast Man's head. But, uh,. It's almost like his magic actually worked. Instead of playing jokes on Man at Arms, he actually got to work on Beast Man. So, let's open this up and take a look. Alright, I can already tell you I do not like the stand. We'll talk about that in a minute. Here's the comic, just like you saw before. Two Orcos, so you have to buy two of them so you can have them uh, play in the scene the way the comic shows. And, uh... I've not read this yet, but you can kind of get to see it yourself. And I am surprised they put a rubber band here to hold him in place. There's not much to him. I don't see why they need to hold him in place, the rubber band, but let's go ahead and get that off there. I should have grabbed my scissors. I just was not expecting a rubber band on this. There we go. Wow, he is really light. There is not much to him at all. So this whole thing must be hollow. And let's talk about the articulation. First of all, it looks like uh, this pushes in and it has the three pieces in there that kind of clock it in. And this thing actually has a rotation on the top of it. So this is your articulation point is actually on this. So I might just 3D print a new bottom, not uh, the whole entire shaft. Um, I do not like this bottom at all. It's full of little sparkles and stuff and it's purple and it just will not blend in very well for like having him just hanging around. Now if he always had a purplish haze on the bottom of him, that would make a lot of sense. All right, his shoulders move up and down, bends at the elbow, his wrist bends, his arms don't appear to come off. Yeah, I don't think so. 
And then his head moves, lots of articulation there. His hat is one piece, so he can't take it off. And his scarf is also one piece to his body. The O is actually um, embossed in there. So for customizing, it'd be hard just to clean off the paint. You'd have to actually fill in the, the groove or sand it smooth. He does have a little flare on the back, so you can't just turn him around. Sometimes when we have customized figures, we'd actually turn them around and then flop the arms and switch them and then uh, put the letter on this side. And we did that for Driella for some of the uh, customs we did in the past. But uh, since the back has that flare, it takes away that little extra aspect. Before I pop this on, because I'm afraid it might not come back off, somebody told me to go ahead and try putting uh, He-Man's legs on the bottom of him and it said it looked really funny and cool. So let's go and try that out. There we go. And there is Orko. You know what? I think I might use Skeletor's legs. It looks like it's close to the same color. It's a little different. This is more purplish. This is more bluish. Maybe once we get um, uh, Faker, it might be a closer blue. Ha <laughs> That is pretty funny looking. All right. So... There we go, and, and it's about the right height now. Ah, he's a little taller than he needs to be. But, there we go. There is he, Orko. Anyway, let's go ahead and put him on his stand. Ah, actually, it is removable. Cool. I was afraid it might not be. And, this goes on the bottom there. That one might not be as removable. It actually has two points of articulation. There's one on the bottom, too. So you can really get him in some really nice low poses or high poses. Oops. And let's see how he looks next to height, next to uh, He-Man or somebody else. And he's about the right height. Maybe a little taller than he should be, because Oracle seems to fly just a little bit lower sometimes. But then again, we have seen him fly above his shoulder, so there you go. Which is kind of funny to think about. If this, if he was going to fly above He-Man's shoulder, that'd make him monstrous. You can just see how this is just way oversized. But again, this is a kid's line, so it makes sense they made him so big. Let's go ahead and compare his size. So here is the Super 7 one in comparison to size, and he's actually bigger than the Super 7 one by quite a bit. And now let's go ahead and take a look at Origins, and you can see yet again, um, the Origins one is smaller than the other two. And of course he's taller because Origins figures are, or not Origins, I'm sorry, Classics, because Classics figures are taller. And then let's go ahead and toss in the smallest one, which is our... Um, loyal subjects sorry you guys it's been a rough morning already of course by the time you watch this it'll be evening but just so you guys are know i'm actually taping this in the morning let's go ahead and put he-man back together that's right line it up first and then pop all right so there is orco i think i covered everything i wanted to cover um we'll have an after the show um live feed which I'll answer questions that you guys may have. And then we'll go ahead and, and answer those questions right afterwards. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. Let's get this channel booming. And uh, I will talk to you guys during the live feed right after this. And uh, that's about it. Oh, don't forget to check out my Origins auction I have going on right now. It is the the Prince Adam He-Man 2-pack from the, the um, Comic-Con uh San Diego Comic Con 2019. All right, you guys. Bye now. See you next video.